are you now effectively the leader of the alternative Labour Party to Jeremy Corbyn's, if I can put it that No, way. I'm the deputy leader of the Labour Party and I've got responsibility for digital culture, media and sport. So the initiative today falls squarely within my brief. And it's something that I've been looking more deeply at. As when I was actually on the back benches, I was really concerned about the harms done by fixed odds betting terminals. And actually the industry pushed back at me and said, look, you're focusing on FOPTIs, as they called them, but you're doing nothing in the online space. Uh, why don't you look at that? And I did look at it, and they were right. There's a problem, and I think we've got some solutions to fix it. What about in other areas, though? I mean, for example, the anti-Semitism, Chris Williamson, uh, uh, being suspended yesterday, I mean, suggestion that you basically said if he isn't suspended, I'm going to walk with 70 uh, colleagues. No, no I, I didn't say that. Uh, although, you, you know, to be very honest with you, Adam, you've probably seen me up in the volume uh, and frequency uh, of uh, comment on uh, anti Jewish racism that is conducted by a small number of Labour Party members. And I'm doing that because. I've been elected to preserve the reputation of the Labour Party, which is a 120-year-old institution with a very proud record of fighting racism. And I'm not going to allow 500,000 members of the Labour Party be, to be tainted by racism. So when I see cases of anti-Semitism, from now on I'm going to be calling it out publicly. There is an individual responsibility on all of us in public life to call it out. But there's a collective responsibility too, and that goes to members of the Shadow Cabinet and members of my National Executive Committee, and I'm hoping that they will also step up to deal with I mean, this problem. It, it is astonishing it's taken so long for Labour to get on top of this. I mean, there, there does seem to be a fair accusation that even if the majority of MPs and majority of senior people in the Labour Party aren't anti-Semitic themselves, they are enabling it or tolerating it within their ranks. Well, all, all I can say is, like um, some of my colleagues around the Shadow Cabinet, say, well, John McDonnell, for example, you know, we have dealt with this problem too slowly and inadequately. It is obvious that even the changes we've made have, have not worked. We still have people uh, using anti-Semitic language uh, and uh, being very, very unpleasant uh, in this area. And I'm not going to take it. Uh, I felt personal shame, and I thought it was the most shameful day in the history of my party when Luciana Berger left us. She is a young, pregnant woman, bullied out by racist thugs, uh, and that is completely unacceptable. And, you know, when she did that, at that point, I realised that I had to step up, and I'm going to be calling this out day in, day out, as long as it continues. Well, someone said, why not suspend her yeah. constituency Labour Party? Well, I've asked the uh, General Secretary of the Party to investigate goings on, and actually I've asked the General Secretary of the Party to investigate allegations of bullying in the neighbouring constituency, Liverpool Riverside, where um, my colleague Louise Elman has uh, been the subject of anti-Semitic abuse as well. I mean, the people who left were all from the Labour Party, were all people who wanted a second referendum as well. So now that the Labour Party shifted its position, do you think that was a sort of a, a vain gesture, if you like, or was it actually what forced the party to shift its position for uh, fear of others going the same way? I know there's a lot of, sort of complexity and confusion around it. I, I didn't want anyone to leave, let me just say that. Uh, but they didn't force us into this position. In fact, our position was, uh, it was very sort of clear. From yeah, but you conference. and I know that Mr Corbyn and his office were pretty reluctant about it. There's all. definitely levels of sort of enthusiasm for the second referendum amongst my colleagues, but the conference decision negotiated by Keir Starmer uh, with our members uh, was very clear. There's a number of hurdles we needed to approach. We preferred a meaningful vote. We would prefer uh, this to be debated in a general election. We failed on trying to get to there. When Theresa May offered potential concessions, we talked to her, we, we told her what our red lines were, we prepared to help her with a deal if she could get closer to economic alignment. We tried to do that in the chamber last night and we lost that vote. And so now the final part of our policy has been triggered, which is for this to be resolved uh, in a people's vote. Uh, so our policy has been consistent. But by the way, that isn't going to stop us also trying to see whether we can reach a... Uh, uh, a, a concessionary position with the government even though it was rejected by Parliament last night. And how worried are you about further splits in the Labour Party? 
I'm very worried about it. I, I think there are still a number of my colleagues who are perilously close to leaving. And I've described this as a sort of battle for the soul of the Labour Party. Uh, and for, for lots of reasons, all of them understandable. Uh, our front bench, uh, you know, is a sort of made up of people who were prepared to serve under Jeremy when there was a leadership challenge two years ago. And I've been arguing for some time now that we need to sort of change the balance on the front bench so that those, those different traditions that have formed the Labour Party can be more representative. But do you think they'd come back, the Yvette Coopers and people I, like that? I, I honestly don't know, but I do think we need to sort of go through a process of trying to get people back on the front bench. If it can't happen, uh, for whatever reason, whether J Jeremy feels very comfortable with the people he's got on the front bench now or those people don't want to come back, that's fine. And so what I've suggested, if, you know, is a different way of doing it, which is to bring my colleagues together who represent the social democratic tradition to allow them their own sort of policy space that they can feed into the policy. But let's take process. something like the suspension of Chris Williamson. I mean, Mr Corbyn was against that, wasn't he? I don't, uh, actually, I don't know what Jeremy's position he didn't was. Uh, the General Secretary is the one that uh, suspended uh, Chris Williamson. I wrote to her and our chief whip yesterday yeah. morning uh, to say that I thought there was a strong case that Chris Williamson yeah. brought the party. But it is astonishing if you think that and you don't even know if the Labour leader agrees with you. Well, I've not spoken to him because he was in the chamber dealing with yeah. the Brexit debate. But I, mean, I, I have asked him to come and see me next week where we can talk about what further measures we can take to eradicate anti-Semitism in the party and that's the big thing for me. I mean, I remember the day you became deputy leader just uh, over Parliament Square there. You made it clear that you saw yourself as the, the keeper of the conscience of... of or broad labour, if I can call it that, rather, rather than Corbynite labour. Yeah. Could there ever come a point where you say, I simply can't remain in this party? I joined the Labour Party when I was 15. You know, 200,000 people have made me deputy leader. You would have to drive me out of the Labour Party. For yeah, me but to could leave you it. be driven? Do you think, oh, well, 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 they could give it a good go, but that is a good, you know, but I'll be fighting back if they do. You're not, you're not threatening all the time to leave if you don't get I've involved. never threatened to leave the Labour Party, no. I mean, I mean, I'm its deputy leader. I want, I want a viable, electable Labour government. And I've spent three years as deputy leader to try and bring everyone together. Uh, and, you know, the tragedy for me, the honest truth is, those MPs that left, I think we could have avoided that splinter. And we could certainly have done more to support my colleague Luciana Berger uh, before she made that, what I think is a a terrible decision to leave us, but perfectly understandable.